What's up YouTube, what's going on guys? Uh, real quick video, I wanna talk about uh, kind of uh, the difference, I, the, the way I go about my technique in the off season compared to when I'm actually peaking for a meet or hitting some really heavy strength blocks. So currently right now, I'm about 17 weeks out from my next meet. Weights are extremely light. This is actually my first week of training under like meat preparation. Basically meaning like this whole cycle is gonna lead me into my um, competition. And I'm working with really light loads. My top set today was at 430 pounds, which is like 76% of my daily max or so. And now I'm working with 395 pounds on the bar. And it would be really easy for me right now to just move this weight as fast as possible. Uh, and I think a lot of powerlifters especially really approach the bar always super aggressive and trying to move the weight as fast as possible. And I know this sounds kind of obvious, but the idea here is to more so move in a perfect movement pattern. Uh, and then my technique kind of changes, not so much my technique, but my approach to the actual lift changes as I get closer to a meet. So this far out, the weights are so light that I can kind of make them harder and heavier by moving in a perfect movement pattern where I really control everything. I'm more stable and I don't just drop into a hole as fast as I can. I almost treat every set as if I'm approaching it with the aspect of technique in mind and not trying to make it as easy as possible. However, as fatigue gets higher and we get closer to a meet, it's really hard to do that, especially as weights get heavier and the intensity goes up. Um, so in that case, that's when I actually do try to just move the weight as fast as possible. Um, what this will do is when you do it like this early in the off season, you practice every set as if it's a perfect set, you ingrain and strengthen a perfect neurological pathway to your movement patterns. You start to really strengthen that like more upright squat position or whatever might be uh, kind of like a limiting factor in your big three movement patterns. And then as it gets heavier, that carryover will last a while. But there is a point where you can't just approach your sets with like technique in mind. The goal at the end of the day is to move as much weight as possible. And right when I start getting that 85 to 90% range with my sets, I'm just trying to move weight. I don't want to think about technique too much. I want it to be in my mind, but it's kind of a fading thought. As we're right now, the only thought in my head is my technique. So I'm going to kind of show you the difference. This first rep I'm going to do as if I'm in like a good off season, I'm focusing on technique, it's controlled. The second rep, I'll move this weight. It'll still be good technique and form, but I'm just moving it as hard and as fast as I can. You can kind of see the difference. And this mentality, I think a lot of you guys are gonna say, oh, I do that, but you really don't. I see on Instagram all the time, people, they'll be working with 70% loads and they're just ripping their deadlifts up like as fast as they possibly can and they're ingraining very poor movement patterns. And then when they get to their maximal loads, I see them held back by these neurological pathways, these movement patterns that are subpar. And a big part of this isn't some exercise variation or some special program. It's just you approaching your sets wrong. So I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna get up under the bar and kind of show a difference and contrast the two ways you can approach a bar. So remember, first set's gonna be really controlled how it should be doing it. And the second reps, uh, or all the reps after that, I'll just move the weight as fast as I can. Now the technique didn't break down too much there, but I ingrained really poor patterns. My hips shot back a little bit on each rep. Sorry, the camera's having trouble focusing. So my hips shot back on each rep. The bar got unstable. I got a slight bit of knee valgus. There's all these little things that will add up to poor movement patterns when I get to those higher intensities. So instead of dealing with that later, I'm gonna deal with it now, ingrain really good movement pattern, and then when it gets heavier, kind of let it rip. So you guys can see the big difference between going a little bit slower and a little bit faster. Now I want to be really specific on this. The things I'm trying to achieve here is one tightness 
uh, and specific strength in ranges of motion. So range of motion and strength is so movement dependent. You can strengthen very subtle, but like slightly poorer positions in your big movement patterns like the squat, the deadlift, the bench, even those faster reps by like a textbook standard. I think most people would say they're pretty good reps, not perfect, but decent. And I think a lot of people would be okay with that. And I'm just not. And I think that's really one of the biggest differences in like an intermediate lifter to an advanced lifter. And there's a time and place where you need to flip that intensity switch. But right now we're trying to uh, ingrain that tightness and um, really like work on those technique cues and things like that. Something a lot of people don't talk about too is tightness. Like everyone hears in powerlifting you have to be tight, but this is something that I think like higher strung personalities gravitate towards a little bit more. I'm one of them. It was really easy for me early on to learn how to be extremely tight in the squat, the deadlift, stuff like that. Really tension and controlled. It's like a constant hypertension throughout your entire body. Your, all your muscles get really tight and lock everything in. And some people really lack this and they rely on things like your stretch reflex and, and fast rebound. Sorry, we're in a rock climbing gym so it gets a little loud here. Um, to really move the weight instead of like proper force transfer. When we get that slight inward knee movement past the midline or our hips shoot back in the squat or whatever it is, a lot of those things we're leaving pounds on the bar because we're relying on just momentum of hitting the hole in the squat and coming up instead of getting proper force transfer and things like that. So um, tightness, technique, these things are huge and you strengthen them early on in training blocks, like early, early in cycles. And then when you get closer to the meat, it's so ingrained, you don't have to think about it and that's when you start moving explosive. And the reps aren't gonna be perfect then, but the idea isn't to be perfect, it's to try to get there. And each training cycle hopefully gets a little bit more better. This is also why sub-maximal training is so great. I think a lot of people have this idea in their head that as a power lifter, you have to lift extremely heavy all the time to get stronger. And that's not even close to true. And I think why sub-maximal training works is it's not really sub-maximal. I just made that 395 feel a lot fucking harder than the 70% it technically is. It felt more like 77% or so to me because I'm moving so controlled and ingraining those good movement patterns. You can't do that if you have really high intensity sets. Everyone always asks me why I train so light and sub-maximal on my channel, and that's why. There's actually a ton of powerlifters who do this, but I don't think they're as popular in the mainstream powerlifting world, and so you don't see it on YouTube and stuff. But my buddies, Chance Mitchell, um, Eric from uh, TSA, Eric Bodhorn, um, Evan Chafee, who's actually taking over my programming right now, he's the one who programmed this stuff for me. We do stuff a lot more sub-maximal, especially early on. At some point, you gotta go heavy, but there's a time and place where we can really work on that technique and I know everyone's thinking they do this, but it's a big difference between actively doing this every single rep of every set in these early training cycles and like thinking you're kind of doing it and just approaching the bar and trying to move the weight as fast as possible for your Instagram post. So that's pretty much the video for today, guys. That's all I really wanted to go over. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them down in the comment section below. Give the video a thumbs up and I'll see you guys in the next one.